Good evening, everybody. It is good to see you. Glad that y'all could be here tonight. If you came in, you did not get a copy of our prayer list there at the back. So please go grab one right quick so you can have it as we go through there. And y'all don't mind me, just carry on. Don't, don't let me interrupt anything. You can't hear me? I can fix that. All right. Can y'all hear me now? So you got me? Awesome. All right, so that's what a microphone's for. You're having a good night tonight? Yes. You got a good week going? Yep. I hope so. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. Um, we're going to start with the front of our prayer list, if you take a look with me. Uh, a couple of, up, couple of updates there. Uh, Mr. Jack Davis, uh, I understand he went and got some stitches out today. Uh, the doctor checked him out. There's no infection, so stuff's looking good. Uh, he's got a boot, I think, that he's supposed to be doing a little bit of flexing exercises, according to Miss Kathy. Um, but he's going to be doing that for a minute. So keep praying for him. And uh, I think he's got some, some people coming in to help him with some therapy things and things like that. So just continue to pray for them. I know that they would appreciate it. Miss uh, Anita Kitchens in Blackley Memorial. Continue to pray for her. And I'm sure you're all aware of this, but please continue to pray for Miss Bonnie's family. Um, huge, huge uh, gap in our, in our church family uh, with Miss Bonnie going home. Uh, so continue to, to pray for that family just as they go through the grieving process. The service is going to be here on Friday. Um, it's going to be at 11 o'clock here. Friday, there's going to be visitation at 10 o'clock prior to. So uh, please be with them as they, they prepare for that home going service. Also, uh, be in prayer for the family of Miss Clara Simpson. Um, her service is going to be here uh, Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, so, so be in prayer for them. Uh, Miss Clara had 102 wonderful years. Um, and uh, I know her family is thankful for, for those 102 years, and uh, I know I know Miss Clara is grinning from ear to ear right now. So, uh, be in prayer for that family. Continue to pray for Mr. James Bryant as he goes through uh, treatments and, and goes uh, through the process. Uh, Miss Nadine Holland uh, had a note that she is uh, able to walk now, so she's improving. Uh, just continue to pray for her. I understand Ms. Verlian Turtnick, she had a heart cath on the 18th, and everything, came, it, I guess she had a good report from that heart cath. Um, so uh, just keep praying for her. Let's see. We've got uh, Mr. Belinger over in the life changes in the last year. Continue to look at that list periodically. Make sure that you're praying for the folks that have lost people that they love and care about. And uh, Mr. Bart's obviously going to be, be hurting, so uh, be in prayer for him. Anything church family-wise that we need to uh, take note of, we need to update everybody on, or we need to add to our list? Anything? <coughs> Anything you want to add? Okay. If not, look down to extended family for me. Uh, Take note of Miss Betty Tapley uh, in Savannah. Uh, continue to pray for her. Um, please remember the family of Philip Berryhill, uh, Greg, and, and family. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's around for Greg, um, but be in prayer for Greg and, and, and everybody with that loss. Lot, lots of names on here. Uh, some we've, we've gotten updates recently, some we haven't. But any, any new updates that you'd like to give us or 
extended family that we need to add to this list? <coughs> Anything going on that you can share? Yes, sir. I'd like to add a buddy Struden. Buddy Struden. Okay. Okay. Please be in prayer for Mr. Buddy. Yes, sir. Shelly Rockcroft said we could take her name off this list. She okay. was very good. Okay. So we uh, we celebrate that we can take Shelly Rockcroft off the list. We appreciate that update. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Miss Betty's trying to find the rehab folks around. Her. Yeah, I know that uh, they've been kind of going through the whole insurance game and trying to figure all that out. Yep, so pray pray them through that. Anybody else? Any updates that you'd like to share tonight? Trey Beard, he was doing good. Back working some and so good. he was better than his stuff 15 years. Wow. I need to have that done. <laughs> All right. Good for Trey. That's awesome. You, we ought to keep him on just to continue praying through this, you think? Or? Okay. Y'all continue to pray for Trey. Anybody else? Any other updates? All right. If not, flip over to the back. Uh, Miss 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 Iverline Arnold is back at at home. Um, we were talking about that at staff meeting. It's hard to say all that <laughs> without being confusing. I, my suggestion was we talk about the little C church or the big C church. We should talk about the big H. At home. <laughs> so, I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah. Like my, Okay. I don't know if y'all have ever experienced this in life. Sometimes you feel like your batteries are at 100%, and then all of a sudden they ain't. Uh, these, these batteries were showing me 100% when I started talking, so I wore them out quick. I hope I can make these last a little longer. All right, so any other senior... Uh, living retirement community updates that we need to make sure that we awesome great please uh please be in prayer for these facilities uh this time of year is always hectic like it is in in just about every other facility but uh, a lot going on a lot of activities a lot of a lot of busyness um just pray for them pray for all the caregivers, the people that are, are working with them and supporting them. And, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a big job. And uh, they've got a lot of uh, influence. So be in prayer for them. If you look at special prayer needs, um, just to mention a few, be in prayer for our military. Um, in our world situation, there's a lot of things happening in our world right now. If you follow the news at all, um, I see Putin's face a lot, you know, and um, I, I hear things about the Ukraine and um, just different weapons that we've authorized now. And, you know, and so it, everything is just kind of amping up and there's a lot of noise right now. So be in prayer for, for Russia, be in prayer for the Ukraine, uh, be in prayer for Israel, uh, continue to pray for 
uh, Gaza and all the things that are happening in that region, but especially be in prayer for our military, be in prayer for those uh, guys and gals that we know and we care about and even those that we don't know um, that are serving our country and serving our country well and it can be difficult. Uh, be in prayer for our, our leaders, um, the whole administration swap that's going to be coming up and all the things that are going on uh, as this year closes out and as January gets closer. Uh, just be in prayer for wisdom for our leaders that, uh, that they would make, make appropriate decisions and, and decisions that build unity instead of division uh, within our nation. Continue to pray for our school system. Uh, continue to pray for Little Light and all the things they have going on. There's going to be a shindig in this very room tomorrow night. So uh, be in prayer for them as they, they show off a little bit for their parents. I know that will be a fun time. Uh, continue to pray for our personnel committee and uh, also be in prayer for our choir just as they prepare for uh, this, this thing that's coming up on the 8th of December. Uh, our children's choir as they prepare, our adult choir, our handbells as they prepare. Um, this is going to be a pretty, uh, pretty big deal, and it's going to be a lot of fun, but there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of practice that has to happen, so uh, be in prayer for them as they prepare. Continue to pray for our missionaries. You can see uh, some highlights there. Um, all those folks that are serving uh, just uh, without fail, and the people that are serving in difficult areas, be in prayer for them as they serve. It looks like, based on, well, Paul David is, uh, has stepped into, uh, into the world, and Mr. Alan Curtis is grinning pretty big. So, uh, yeah. I actually, I actually sent a text to David, too, checking on him today, and, and he sent me a picture back, and he was grinning about as big as you are, Mr. Allen. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of happiness in that family right now. So be in prayer for them uh, as they get situated and hopefully get back home soon. Um, Alex and Holly expecting in December. Any updates on? Updates. They uh, went to the doctor yesterday. She had dilated five centimeters. Sent them home. Oh, okay. She actually worked today, and they told her she didn't have it tonight. She was to be at the hospital early in the morning. See, God knew what he was doing when he let women have that responsibility. Because if my nose starts to run, I get whiny. And she, and she worked through it. So yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so, so tomorrow. That's, that's great news. Um, not on our list, but just a reminder that the Medinas are expecting. Uh, we found out at our packing party uh, the other night. So... Uh, Congratulations to Joshua and Kimberly Medina and what's going to be coming up uh, before too long. When's your due date? Okay, very cool. Uh, we'll be praying for y'all. Any, any other ads to our expected parent list that y'all want to go ahead and get on the record? Anybody? I mean, don't lie, but... <laughs> All right. Um, real quick, uh, dive through some, some things that are happening. Uh, Legacy Builders tomorrow are going to be uh, delivering some meals, I understand, because it smelled like turkey in this place today. And uh, if you ever go home and, and somebody's been cooking in the kitchen and it's really hard not to go in there and pick at stuff and eat at stuff, that's where I was today as I smelled that, that grill going. So um, it's going to be really, really good food going out to some folks and, and loving on people. So uh, be in prayer for them for safety as they get everything delivered, and then they're going to get back in this room and, and have some time of fellowship. So uh, awesome ministry. That's tomorrow. The 23rd, um, there's going to be a shower for uh, Nina Beth and Josh. It's going to be at the Whipple House from 10 uh, to 1130. 
um, at the Whipple House. So uh, hopefully y'all can make it to that. Legacy Builders, just a, a reminder, the third is the annual Christmas dinner. Is that right? 6 p.m.? Yeah, make sure you sign up. Let us know that you'll be attending that. And then on the 7th, Winter Wonder Lights trip. And that's in Athens, and I think the bus pulls out of here at 1. So don't be here at 101. Make sure you're here at 100. And you need to sign up for that too, right? Because that's already closed out, but we need their money. Okay. <laughs> so y'all can't go to that if you haven't signed up, but you can send money anyway, Miss Jan said, if you'd like to send money. All right. So that was kind of poor taste to me to, to even mention that. I'm sorry. Do not forget, December the 8th is our combined choir with Mount Calvary. Um, It'll be in this room at, at 5.30. I think, it, yeah, it's in this room. 5.30. And at 3, it's going to be at Mount Calvary. Um, our children will be over there, and their children will be over here, and so it's going to be a big deal at both places. Uh, it's going to be a lot of music, and there's been a lot of preparation, so I encourage you to make sure that uh, it's on your calendar to be here for that. This coming Sunday, no Bible drills. Uh, so keep that in mind. No Bible drills this Sunday and no Awana this Sunday with, with uh, the Thanksgiving week stuff happening. Um, so please keep that in mind. The 27th is Thanksgiving, right? Is that right? No, 28th. 28th is Thanksgiving. The Wednesday before Thanksgiving, we're not having a meal here, correct? Correct. Okay. Keep that in mind. And then um, our office is, okay, here it is. Our office is going to be closed on the 28th and 29th. And then we will be going into uh, our combined worship services on December the 1st. Uh, so please keep that in mind. We'll be in the sanctuary beginning out. And we'll, well, I guess we'll be in there for the whole month of December. <laughs> Beginning out and ending out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, join us in the, in the sanctuary for uh, our time of worship in combined services in December. Any other announcements that uh, you want to make sure you remind us of or that maybe I didn't mention we need to make sure folks know about? Hey, Jeff, the shoebox is well, they uh, took 1,380 today down the east. So that's, that's, that's not too shabby. 1,300 shoe boxes coming into our facility on top of the fact that we were able to, as a church, collect 320 um, during our, our packing party, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So, yeah, and I, I'd heard the first day for our area, our region, was like 6,500 shoe boxes. I don't know what it is over the last couple of days, but um, there, there's been a lot of people making a lot of shoe boxes, which means there's a lot of gospel getting out in some places that need to know about Jesus. So excited about that. Appreciate all the volunteers that have been working so hard to help us through all that. Anything else that you want to mention tonight? You can see our drop-off locations. Um, if uh, you want to you haven't signed the sheet, but you want to come hang out and help us? Come on. Any other announcements? If not, we'll go ahead and have a word of prayer. So if you would, if you'd please pray with me. God, we're grateful um, for all the things that we see your hands at work at around us. Father, we know that, um, that you are active. And Father, sometimes we, we're moving too fast in our own little world so that we don't take time to see what you're working on and where you're working. Um, but God, we, we are confident that you're, you're busy. You're constantly at work. We thank you for the glimpses that we get to see of those things. 
Mr. Bush mentioning Operation Christmas Child. It's a great example of, of seeing your hand kind of move things around and in your sovereignty. We, we trust that those boxes are get, going to get to the right kid that needs to get those boxes. And, and so it's just exciting to see that. Father, we know that there are a ton of things happening around us that we just, we miss. We, we stumble by for whatever reason, usually because we're not paying attention. But we're thankful for those things that are, are happening, that, that you're moving in people and around people. You're doing great things, and, and Father, we, we don't really see them. But again, we trust that you're at, at work. We, we know you are. And uh, we're thankful for that. We're thankful for, uh, for what you do. Father, we realize that there are uh, a lot of, lot of people in our community and specifically in, in this, this church family uh, that, are, that are hurting right now and grieving right now. Father, I, I think specifically about um, the loss of Miss Bonnie, and Ms. Simpson, Father, you, um, you know what you're doing, God, and we trust you with that. But there's going to be a hole um, where they were. And so we just ask, God, that you would, um, Father, that you would work uh, to heal. We ask, God, that you would um, help us to, to remember the legacy that both of these ladies are leaving the, the influence and the impact that they've had on, on each one of us, Father, and on, on this community. Um, we're thankful for that. Pray that you would be with the families, Father, as they uh, approach these, these homegoing services. God, that you would just strengthen them. Father, that you would remind them of, of the joy. Father, that you would remind them of... of uh, the lives that these ladies have lived. Father, we ask that you would be uh, in the middle of things that are happening in our world. God, they're admittedly too complex for me to understand. And um, God, I really, you know, I, I try to understand some of it, but I realize there's, there are things that I, I can't get a hold of. But None of it is a surprise to you. None of it is bigger than you're able to comprehend and move in. And so we just ask you to do that. We ask, Father, that you would guide the leaders of our nation. Father, give them wisdom in the, the choices and decisions that they make. I pray, God, that, um, that they would look to you for guidance. And, Father, that... Uh, if, if they're not looking to you, I pray that you would just give them guidance anyway. I pray that you would point them and lead them. I thank you for our men and women that are serving our nation, Father, that do uh, the hard work of, of keeping our freedom. I thank you for the missionaries that we've had an opportunity to meet and know. I thank you for the missionaries, Father, that are sharing the gospel in places, and, and we don't even know their names. We don't, we don't know them, but, but, God, they are doing a tremendous work for your glory and for your kingdom, and, God, we are so thankful for that. Father, I, I pray for uh, all the folks that are in our extended living facilities, retirement communities, at home, um, nursing homes. Father, I just pray, God, that this would be a season that they would be reminded of how much they are loved. I pray that this would be a season that they are reminded that they are loved by you. I pray for uh, these facilities and their caregivers, God, that you would strengthen them in their service. I pray for... Um, Pray for this season, God, that we would um, that we would first be thankful. 
and specifically as we move closer to Christmas, God, that we would understand how much we have to be thankful for. The birth of your son, Father, the, the life, the sinless life he lived, the cross he hung on on our behalf, the way that he rose again, defeated death, and because of that, we can have a life eternal with you. And we're so, so thankful. Father, help us, help us be the hands and feet of your son. Help us to live in a way that glorifies and honors you. Help us to serve you and live in obedience to you. And I pray it in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to be in Psalm 144 tonight. The last three Wednesday nights that we've been together, uh, we've been looking at the theme of gratitude, kind of leading, leading up to um, this Thanksgiving celebration uh, that we're about to have on the 28th. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of gratitude scripture uh, in the book of Psalms. And if you dig a little bit, you, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Um, David obviously wrote a lot of the book of Psalms. There's a lot of songs in the book of Psalms. And much of the direction of these Psalms are toward God and in gratitude specifically for what God has done, pleading for what they know God can do. And so uh, this is another example of that. This is actually a Psalm that David wrote. Uh, we're going to look at 15 verses in Psalm 144, and we're just going to jump in. So if you would, if you'd read with me, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of Scripture. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me. And deliver me out of great waters from the hand of foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners whose mouth speaks lying words and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars sculpted in palace style, that our barns may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So the author of this psalm is David. Um, the setting for this psalm, according to... Uh, some scholars, uh, and, and if you read, it kind of points in that direction just intuitively, is that there's some kind of foreign invasion that maybe is on the cusp of happening, some attempt to kind of come in and, and take over. So, but, you know, we don't, we don't know for sure, um, but it's evident whatever trouble might be on the way um, or whatever has gotten... David's attention here as he, as he records this psalm, the trouble itself is kind of the backstory. 
um, it, it, it's really God himself who is at the forefront of what David's thinking about. So you, you've got this backstory leading David's thought process, but his thought process is all about God. His thought process is on, on the Father. So his circumstance, whatever that is specifically, again, we don't know. Um, we, can, we can think it has something to do with maybe some people wanting to come in and there's going to be some war stuff happening. Um, but the circumstance may have, may, may have been the trigger for David's prayer here, but the circumstance really is, is simply a catalyst or, or a vehicle for um, his praise, his praise of God, his, uh, his trust in God, his, his wanting to express his trust and faith in God, God's faithfulness, and David's expression of gratitude. So, again, you know, kind of war maybe in the background of this, this picture that's, that's painted by these words, but at the forefront of it all is David's gratitude for God. That, that's kind of... That, that's the landing point. The first thing that David points to, and, and I'm going to point us to it tonight too, is how thankful that, that David was for God's provision. He was thankful for all the things that God had provided. He says this in verse 1, Blessed be the, rock, the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and the one in whom I take refuge. So, so gratitude for God is where we begin this, this psalm at. Um, gratitude for stability, uh, gratitude for God's protection, for uh, the preparation and training that David had been, been given. Um, so in a word, David was thankful for God's provision for him. God had kind of set the course for David. Uh, he thanked him for uh, preparing him for, for what he has had to face in the past. Um, he thanks God for what he's going to be faced with in the future and the things that are going to be coming his way. God had prepared him to be a warrior. And, and we all know David's story. Uh, he started out herding sheep, but even in, in the process of being a, a, a shepherd, a young shepherd boy, God was working in him to get him prepared to be a warrior. Um, we know that he had uh, not necessarily battles with people early on, but he had battles with with animals that were trying to kill his sheep and, and take take his sheep out. Um, we know the story of Goliath, right, where this young boy stood up to a nine-foot-tall monster of a man uh, because he felt like God wanted him to do it, and God provided what he needed in that moment too. So God had prepared him to be a warrior. David said, you know, God had been his fortress. He, God had been his shield. He had been his protector. And, and so God had been this solid rock um, that, that had been there for David to stand on uh, in, the, in the challenging times of David's life, um, God had given him stability. Um, God had given him peace in those, those moments. The kind of peace that, that, that you get when you lay down in a pasture of green grass, green, cool grass. Y'all ever done that before? If you've never done that, you need to go do it tonight. <laughs> Maybe not tonight. Because <laughs> there's other things to avoid in cow pastures. But I remember as a small boy, um, my granddad always had cows. And a lot of times I would go out to the cow pasture and drive the cows crazy because I'd be on a motorcycle jumping terraces. Uh, but there were those moments when I wasn't on my motorcycle that I would just go and I would just kind of lay out there in the middle of that pasture. And when I read about David doing that in, in one, of the, one of the Psalms, um, Green grass when it's cool, the sun shining. I mean, there is nothing better. There's no more peaceful feeling 
except for the little stream that was running down through the cow pasture too that I, I could hear trickling as I lay in that kind of cool, damp, thick grass. Um, God had been that stability for David. And David was thanking him. David thanked him for providing, for uh, his provision. The next thing we see David being thankful for is God's grace. We all in this room probably understand the, the vastness of God's grace. Well, David understood that too. He said, Lord, what is, what is man that you take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. David, David saw that humanity, when, when we have a clear perspective of the creator, we're all pretty insignificant. I mean, in the scheme of things, we're, we're pretty insignificant. Human life, like a, like a breath, like a, like a vapor, like a, like a shadow, Yet, God created mankind with purpose. He created us all with purpose and with great value because he, he created us in his what? Yeah, we're created in his image. We have great value because of that. God is, we don't understand why, because a lot of times we're not worthy of his attention, but he is a hundred percent, a thousand percent, if there is such a thing, attentive to us individually. I mean, he knows what coach was doing today. Everything, every step you took, coach, he knew exactly what you were doing. He knew every time Mr. Allen had a thought about this new great grandbaby. And that thankful heart was just kind of showing through his, his smile. God knew that and was picking up on that. He, he, he knows us. And he's 100% interested in us. He's 100% attentive toward us. All because of his grace. Not, not because we're entertaining, uh, not because of, of who we are, but because of who he is and the grace that he has that he extends toward us, that he would pay attention to us. If, if, you've, if you've raised a family before, if you've had children before, one of the things that, at least from my perspective, that that I've learned about children is they like your attention. They, they like to know that you're paying attention to them. Uh, a lot of times my kids will come up to me and, and just try to make the point, hey, dad, are you watching this, you know? Are, are you paying attention to me? Because I'm fixing to, to do a wheelie on my, my bicycle and this is going to be spectacular. Or whatever it is, our kids want, want attention. And sometimes we do too. Well, a lot of times we do. But the fact of the matter is that we are never apart from God's attention. We always have his attention. We always have his, his view. He's always looking. He's always eager to see what's happening with us. Not because of who we are, but because of his grace, he extends that to us. David realized that, that man is really 100% incapable of anything of significance apart from God, but God is always 100% capable of significance. And what he does, everything he does, is significant. If God puts his hand to it, guess what? It matters. Which leads to the fact that if God created you, if God poured into you, if God designed you, if God wove you in your mother's womb, guess what you have? significance. You are significant to him. David, you know, I wasn't there, but I, I get the sense David was kind of, you know, 
worried about what was coming, but he was also worshiping God at the same time. And he's, he's sitting in this place where he is so grateful. I mean, so thankful. It's just, it's just bubbling out of him. So David was thankful. The next thing I want to point you to is David was thankful not only for God's grace, not only for his provision, he was also thankful for God's presence, okay? He recognized God's position of being way above us, so much above us, but he was also aware that God, as, as much above us as he is, chose to reach down to us and interact with us. He interacts with humanity. David realized that God's presence is a powerful thing. Having God beside him, with him, around him was powerful. It was, it was, it was helpful, but David also realized it was necessary for everything. God's presence was necessary for him. Necessary for him to be able to walk in a way that pleased God. He couldn't do it apart from God helping him do it. So David paused in this moment with the perspective and the right on perspective, very true perspective that God is always near. God is, God is here. God is with us. David was also thankful for God's rescue. Even though earlier David realized that he had been prepared to be this, this warrior guy, um, and with all the preparation, God had chosen him. He had, he had ordained him to be the the king, the chosen king of his people. I was thinking about that as I was, as I was reading through all this. And I, you know, what must it have been like for, for David to have the, the humble realization that God had put his hand on him and said, you're going to be the king of my people. Out of all these other people, that could have been king over Israel. You, you are my guy. You are the guy that I'm choosing to lead my people. The, the people I love most, you are going to lead them. I thought that had to be kind of crazy scary for David. I don't know if it was or not. It would have been for me. But think about for a minute. If you have a family, if you have children, God put his hand on your shoulder and he said, hey, Tyler, you are my guy. You're, I want you to lead this family. I want you to lead these children. He chose us to lead our families. He chose us to lead in, in the areas that we are. He put his hand on us and said, I want you to live for me in such a way that you're going to influence on my behalf. So God, God had ordained him, chosen him to be the king. God had prepared him to lead armies, had prepared him to be able to fight battles all on God's behalf. And even though David was skilled at it, even though he was trained, even though he was prepared, David had no reservation with saying, you know, it's not my skill, it's not my training, it's not how good I am with a sword or how good I am in leadership. None of that would matter apart from God. None of that matters. The preparation apart from God God is the one who makes the difference in a win or a loss in a battle. David lived his life understanding 
that as skilled as he was, as talented as he was, as rugged as he was, as prepared as he was, he was not the rescuer. God was the rescuer. So, a couple of things I'd like y'all to think about. And this is, this is for all of us who are in this room that are followers of Jesus. My first question is, are you thankful? Well, that's my first question. Are you thankful? Man, you ought to be. You sure ought to be. And you ought not just be thankful. You need to be living in gratitude every minute. Now, if I'm transparent, do I do that? Probably not. I get ornery as an old coot. But we ought because we have so much to be thankful for. My first question really is this. Are you thankful for God's provision? Are you thankful for the way he, he provides for you and provides around you? Um, and the second, the part B to that question is, do you recognize God's provision in your life? There, there's, a, there's a lot of times that we can get tripped up. Um, you know, we want to we wanna thank God about certain things and then neglect to thank him about other things. But at the end of the day, if you have the things you need to, to do the things that you need to do, guess who provided that for you? God. Yes, you work. Yes, you probably earn money. Yes, you have talents and abilities. Yes, you provide. Yes, you, you do all these things. But ultimately, it's just like David he was trained to be a warrior, and he was a really good warrior. David was trained to be a leader, and he was a really good leader. But at the end of the day, David knew it wasn't him that brought around the success. It was God who brought the success, and it's the same for us. We, we because of God's provision for us, we enjoy what he gives to us, what he provides for us. So do you have a heart of gratitude for what God has given to you and what, the way that God provides for you? And do you recognize that it's God giving it to you? Or do you think you're doing it? I want to caution you against thinking that you're doing it. God is the provider. James 1, we just got through going through James, verse 17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Every good thing, not, not some good, God does some good stuff, not every good gift is from the Father. Every. Does every mean some? Or does every mean all? It means all. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God was, God is, God will be. He's the same. He's the same God that, that rained goodness down on David. He's the same God that rains goodness down on us. He's the same God who provides. Do you recognize God's provision? And the last part of that, part C, if you will, are you using God's provision for his glory? Are you taking the things that he gives to you and to me, and are we using those things for his purposes and for his glory? Because he's, he's not just providing things to us for us to simply enjoy or to be happy. He provides things that we need 
He sustains us all for one purpose. Our one purpose is to bring glory and honor to his name. So are you using God's provision? Next question. Are you thankful for God's grace? I hope so. If you're here and you're a Christian, you realize how big grace is and especially how big God's grace is in your salvation story because you didn't earn it. You didn't do anything to deserve it. God's grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift. Are you thankful for God's grace? Second part of that, part B, do you recognize God's grace? Do you recognize how lavishing God's grace is, how much he pours out on us every day? It's, it's, it's funny for me personally. Some days it seems like every second I'm, I'm, I'm getting hit in the face, almost slapped in the face with grace. Just bam, bam, and I'm going, wow, I, I, I feel it, God. You know, I see it. And there's some days I'm just going through and I don't even consider all the grace that he's been pouring on me until I stop for a minute and I pause and I go, oh, my goodness. That was so kind of God in my life to do that. So are, are, you, are you thankful for God's grace? Do you recognize God's grace and, and, and how he uses grace to sustain us, not just to save us, but to sustain us? And are you living in that grace are you walking in that grace? The next thing I'd ask you is, are you thankful for God's presence? If, if, if you're not thankful for God's presence, you don't understand it. When I was 10 years old, I think, my grandma had a goat barn. She didn't have any goats by the time I came along. I guess I killed them all or something. I don't know. I don't ever remember having goats, but she had this old goat house out in the back, and it was, it was just kind of an old dilapidated thing. But... I crawled up in the top of that goat house one day. It was, it was, you know, had rafters. And so I climbed up in the top of it. Uh, we were having a big family reunion. If you've ever been to a Sawyer family reunion, you can understand my need to get away <laughs> sometimes. But I, would, I climbed up in that, that goat house. And I stayed up there for a little while and decompressed because I'm an introvert. I've said, told you all that before. I decompressed a little bit. going to go back out and get in the middle of, of that Sawyer bunch. And I started to climb out through the hole that I climbed into, and there was a big old snake laying right on the ledge. It was, it was a rat snake, but he had obviously eaten a lot, and he was like, to a 10-year-old boy, he was about that big around, and he was right there where I would put my hands to climb down. And so I was stuck in my mind. I had no alternatives. I was stuck. And so I started hollering, you know, help. Because <laughs> I was scared of snakes. I, and I still I don't like snakes. But nobody would hear me because I was in the top of a goat house a long way from the house. I don't know that I've ever felt so alone. This is the reason I'm sharing this. I, I was in a moment of distress. I was in a moment where I felt totally isolated and totally alone. Um, and nobody heard me. 
But what I can guarantee you is anytime you feel that isolation or you feel that totally alone feeling, guess what? You're not. If you know God through the Son, you are not alone. You never will be. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He will never leave you alone. Do you recognize that? Do you recognize that truth that God's presence is with you daily? He walks with you daily. And are you leaning into his presence? I hate to leave you hanging. I got down. (laughs) The next question I'd ask you is, are you thankful for God's rescue? Because if you're here and you're saved, you were rescued. I was rescued by a God who is full of grace and full of mercy and full of compassion, who loved me. He rescued me and he rescued you. That should put us on our knees with gratitude. The part B to that question is, do do you acknowledge God's rescue? Because I'm here to tell you, I mean, straight up, I love y'all, straight up. But you needed rescue. You, you couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And the last thing I'll say is this. If you're here and you don't know Jesus yet, if you're online and you're watching this tonight and you don't know Jesus yet, God is a God of provision. He has provided a way for you to know him. He has made a way. He has provided you everything you need to have a relationship with him, to spend an eternity with him in a place the Bible calls heaven, and his name is Jesus. God provided a way. God also freely extends grace to all of us. But if you don't know Jesus yet, he's extending a hand of grace to you. He wants you to know that grace is available to you. God also gives a gift of his presence to all of us who who take that step to give ourselves to him through Jesus And his name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us to guide us, to lead us, to walk with us. We are never alone. If you don't know Jesus yet, God is the rescuer. And he will rescue you like he rescued me. I've given you tonight some reasons to be thankful, just in case you needed reminding. Don't take the gifts that God has given to us lightly. Don't think that you, even though you don't say it out loud, you don't talk about it, don't think you deserved any of it. You didn't. You didn't deserve any of God's grace. Yet, that's who he is. That's the way he loves us. Let's pray and we're going to close. God, we are we are negligent 
to give you the glory you deserve. Flat out, point blank. I'm sorry, but that's, that's what we do. We don't give you the glory your name deserves. But God, we, we want to do that. Our heart's desire is to do that. We want you to know that we recognize your goodness. And God, we're thankful for it. God, we want, we want you to understand we recognize your grace and we're grateful. We're so grateful, God, that you extended grace to us. God, we want you to hear from us that we, we are grateful. We're thankful for the provisions that you make um, to sustain us, the things that you've done in our lives, the, the, the way that you've equipped us, the way that you've trained us, the way that you've shown yourself to us. God, we're thankful for your provision. But God, more than anything else, we're thankful for your rescue. We're thankful out of millions and millions of people that you put your hand on us and you said, you are my child. You have put your hand on our shoulder and said, you are significant. I created you in my image. God, help us, help us to live in that. Help us to walk in that. Help us to grow into a people who recognize and give you thanks and glory for all that you are. Not just on Thanksgiving, but every single day. You deserve it. We love you. God, we can't tell you thank you enough. But we need to try. Amen.